Hello fellow programmers, my name is Marty, and welcome to part 13 of the Python game development series. Here's the game where we left it in the last video. So you can see here that we have basic moving around on the screen, basic collision detection between ourselves and platforms. In this video, we're going to be handling a gravity function. You might be noticing that now I'm using sublime text to actually edit the code, which the text editor that you use, it doesn't really matter. You can still use idle and still follow along with this tutorial, no problem though. I just honestly prefer sublime text. Okay, let's start by going into the main function. So we just go into the main function. Now, for our level array, let's just make it nice and basic so that we have a basic floor here. All right, let's scroll down into our player class. Right now, us moving down is going to be compensated by gravity. So you can just take out that line, that whole if statement right there. Now what we need to do is we need to make an if statement compensating for gravity. Let's go if self dot y vel is not equal to in this case, if you're not equal to zero, there's a good chance that you're going to be falling down. And so there's going to be two conditions that are going to have to be met. And self dot y valve, we're going to need to a way so that we don't fall insanely fast if you have a long distance to fall. Because like in real life, if you throw a stone off of something like a cliff, it's not going to infinitely keep going faster and faster. Eventually, it's going to find a spot where the resistance of the air stops it from accelerating. And for us, we're just going to go with some random number. Like, if the y velocity is less than 100, we'll start with that colon. Then we're going to go self dot y vel plus equals. And we can go with 0 0.3. Control save. If you're on sublime, it's control B to build current project if you're on idle just hit a five and it should work we don't seem to be falling there it looks like there's something wrong with our logic here well a good way of debugging code to figure out what is going on is let's print out the value of our y velocity and see if this if condition is ever even going to be met and to do that all you have to do is just type print opens parameters and what it is you want to print in our case it's going to be an integer or actually a float not an integer self dot y val the difference between an integer is an integer is a whole number a float can be a decimal control save control b and let's say we have zero huh all right so our y velocity is equal to zero right now because we're not falling now if we do move up the computer then says okay you're moving up your y velocity is no longer zero so thus i'm going to subtract 0 0.3 from your y velocity so rather than deciding whether or not we're airborne based on our y velocity a way simpler and more efficient way to do this and a better way to do this a way that would actually work is we would need to create a boolean that is true if we're actually are colliding so let's create that boolean right here in the init function right here we're gonna or actually method a method is when it's inside of a class it's called a method so this def is a method if it's inside of a class and if it's outside of a class it's called a function let's create an extension of self with self dot airborne actually let's just call this on ground that makes sense to me let's set it to equal to false initially and just with capital f if you're dealing with python code if we are colliding with the top of a sprite that means we're on top of a sprite if in that case we're going to want to first well it's actually a good idea to here to go self dot y vel equals zero and here's where we want to set our newly created boolean self dot on ground and we want to set that equal to true if we are on top of a platform so now this boolean is going to be set to true always because once you initially collide with that platform it's always true because it is never told to be false now making this boolean work is not as simple as it seems see because we're not constantly colliding with our block because what basically happens is here is our player right so we're falling or we're moving down we hit the top of the block now we actually go inside the block's detectable area so we go slightly inside it then once the iteration comes to the line of code that says okay if the player is inside your detectable block and move them outside of it the block would actually go be going like this but then anyway setting our value equal to true if we're inside the block is not going to work all the time because as soon as we're outside of it it's going to be false again even though we're it appears we are on top of this platform what we have to do is it's actually going to flicker between being true and false for just the gravity we can get away with that just for the gravity to do that we're going to set self dot on ground equal to true now you might be saying to yourself hold on a second marty you just told me that once you set a boolean to true it's going to be true until you tell it's false and that's correct because what did i do not true here we want it to be false here it's going to say it's false even though it might be true and then it's going to run this line of code so before the iteration is finished before our the interpreter finishes the loop 
it's going to go here and say, oh, when I ask, it's true after all. And it doesn't really matter that we're tricking Python here, even though we're saying, hey, it's false and that it's really true. The interpreter just knows, hey, it's false here, boom, it's true. And that's all we need, because if it's not flickering, based on that, we can tell that we're definitely in the error. Based on that, what we can do is instead of testing for our y velocity, let's just go with if on ground. Now, you don't have to actually go, you don't have to use a uh, comparison. All you have to do is if self dot on ground. And since self dot on down in the end returns a one or a zero, it's going to just test if, it, if it's one. And if it's one, it's going to run the line of code. So if on ground, if not on ground is what we actually want to do here. So we can just go if not, control save to save it, control B to run out if you're on subline. Right, so you can see that we did fall. And if you look real close, and I mean real close, you can see our guy is doing a little jitter bounce. Not quite what we want here, but it is in essence working. So what we need to do here is we need to up how much we're incrementing our Y velocity when we're jumping. So to do that, we can just go if up key. We're gonna need to change up this logic slightly. So instead of if testing, before the way we had it, it was that, so we can't infinitively accelerate this way either. But since now gravity is gonna compensate for how fat, how high we jump, we don't have to worry about that. So we can take that if self.y velocity is greater than six. So take that line of code out, make sure you've detabbed appropriately. On Python, tabbing is key. If you miss a tab, your code's not gonna work. Instead of just testing for the up key press, we're gonna need to also be sure that we are on the ground to be able to jump. Control save and then control B to run it. So now, what? This is where the debugger is handy on Python. So here we can say why the interpreter is complaining. It's saying if up key and on ground, name error on ground is not defined. So that's fairly simple. It's simple enough what it's telling us. It's saying it's it, this on ground. Where did this come from? That is because there is no on ground. It's a self dot on ground. And I'm just gonna take out that letter self dot on ground control save and then control b to run it and now we should be able to jump oh not quite high enough though we need to actually increment our y velocity by a larger number than that so let's go with something like let's actually just set it equal to if we initially just jump up let's set it equal to something like six and let's see what happens control save control b now oh we can't even jump I guess we are going to have to increment it. Let's add 6 to it. So plus equals 6. Let's try that. Hopefully, I'm feeling we should be able to jump then. No. We're going to have to go with a bigger number yet. 100 seems solid to me. Control save. Control B. Now we should be... Whoa. Right here we're saying if not up key or down key, then set our Y velocity equal to 0. This means that this gravity function is doing nothing because if we're not pressing a key, the interpreter first says, if you're not pressing any up or down keys, your Y velocity is 0. Let's take that out. That's what it was. Should be able to. Uh, not working quite exactly the way I want it. That's because we're probably. What ha is happening is we're incrementing by too much. So let's go with just add one. And then let's increment. The, like let's actually fall. Our gravity speed is going to be 0 0.5. Since we're actually printing out the value of on ground. This is going to give us a hint of where this error is coming from. We can see right here. If I press the up key. It's saying it's true. This means that we're probably jumping in the wrong direction. We need to subtract one. Save, control B, and now we should be able to jump ever so slightly. We need to get jumping slightly higher. So instead of one, let's go with five. Right, and we are actually jumping in the air. From now, it's pretty much just fine tuning. Instead of five, let's go with 10, see how high we can jump now. Now that's a reasonable jump. Make our code more maintainable. Let's create a variable called gravity. So this is actually going to be a universal law here. Universal law has nothing to do with programming. We're going to create a global variable. The, a global variable is so that all functions and classes can use this variable. We're going to call this variable gravity. Gravity equals, in this case, 10. And now we can actually replace, instead of 10 we're down here, we can replace gravity. Oh, where was that? Right here. We can replace 10 with gravity. So, and that sums up this video. Now, in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at the fundamentals of how this game is actually running. What I mean by that is, what we're actually doing here is we're slowing our game down, right? Timer.tick, we're saying, okay, we're going to get 60 frames per second, no matter what. What a frame per second is, is uh, it's how smooth the game feels. So the more you have, the better. Every time that the Python interpreter runs through this while loop here, that's one frame. So the more frames we can get, the higher frames per second, which is going to result in more smooth gameplay. This also means if we have a more powerful computer, 
then we're going to be able to run more frames per second. And if we're running more frames per second, functions such as gravity would not function in the same way. Because if it's going to increment it more, it's gr going to be able to increment faster than on a slower machine, a w computer with worse specs. Then we won't be able to jump on one computer and another computer will be able to jump at turtle pace. So to fix that, what we have to do is we have to compute the time elapsed between each frame. Using that, we need to multiply values such as our gravity by the elapsed time. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you have a question about programming, just leave it down below in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a good day and I'll see you next video.